Well, hey everybody, welcome to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and in this video, we're going to be talking about, or actually, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, swap a motor on your Eachine Wizard X220 or other quadcopter, because maybe you just got this quadcopter, maybe it's like a, your first. Uh, racing style quadcopter maybe you totally smash the motor and you got to swap it out and you don't have a whole lot of soldering experience or something like that so I am going to walk you through the process of swapping one because they're all the same anyhow now this will requires a few basic tools so if you know how to solder that's definitely good it's really not hard in fact um, soldering motor wires is pretty easy you just need a basic soldering iron you need some solder and this soldering iron that I'm using is actually, uh, well, it's, it's a Weller uh, brand. And it used to have a really nice uh, base station that would, um, con so you could control the temperature of the, uh, of the actual soldering iron. Um, but I kind of blew that up. That was totally my fault. But it is no more. So now I have to just plug it straight into the wall. So I'll, sh I'll show you a little tip that you can do if you have a cheap soldering iron that just plugs straight into the wall because usually they overheat. And I'm going to show you how I deal with that. Let's get started. All right. So we've got our quad here on the bench. And uh, I've already taken off the other uh, three motors. But I've left this one on here to show you how I'm going to take it off. And uh, I've got my soldering iron here. What I like to do is um, I, I have this plugged into a uh, like a surge protector and so it has a little switch and so I find it really helpful because instead of having to like unplug it I can just flip the switch and then the soldering iron will turn off and it will cool down and that way I can kind of I can kind of regulate the temperature but at least that way um, at least that way I can just easily turn it off or turn it on um, if I'm not going to be using it for a little while so that's that's how I have it set up this is what I'll be using to solder with all right, now desoldering is definitely the uh, the easy part. What you want to do is make sure that you get all your electrical tape and stuff off of the ESC where these three wires are connected for the three motor wires. And uh, you might need to cut away some heat shrink or something like that to expose these little tabs on the ESC, the little solder pads on the ESC. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my soldering iron. I'm going to tin the tip and clean it off a little bit. You want it to be nice and shiny. And uh, I'm going to get my tweezers here. But it's not as big of a deal if you're just removing the wires. I'm just going to heat them up and pull them away. Heat them up, pull them away. And just like that. There you go. It's really that simple. And really soldering it back on is just about as simple. I'm going to put my soldering iron away and flick off the switch because I won't be using it for a little bit. So now I'm going to remove this motor and it's probably going to be easier for you to just leave the motor um, screwed in screwed in place as you remove and, uh, and, and re-solder the wires. That way the motor's not moving around on you. So I'm going to remove this motor and get my new one. All right, here's the new motor that I have here. And uh, this is actually, this is a DYS. This is an old, kind of old one I got off of just an old quadcopter I bought. This is an 1806 uh, 2300 kV motor. And I know you might be thinking, Adam, 1806, what is this? Like three years ago, five years ago? Well, this is just uh, the only set of motors that I happen to have on hand. And I just want to get this thing to be able to fly to do some testing. And uh, so that's what I'm going to use for now. And also just for this demonstration, that's what I'm going to be using. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our motor. And what you probably want to do is uh, if your motor wires are really long, you probably want to cut them to uh, trim them a little bit. So I'm just going to set my motor here and I can kind of get an idea of how long I want the, the wires. I mean, I'd rather have them a little bit longer than too short, but let me trim them. I'm just going to, I don't want to you know, a bunch of excess wire. So I'm going to trim them right about there. I'm just going to get my wire cutters and just chop the, that off. There we go. So now we've trimmed it. And we need to remove the insulation on the ends of the wires. So I'm going to use my wire strippers here. If you don't have wire strippers, you could just use like a, uh, an X-Acto knife and just kind of, what I usually do is just kind of put it right there on the end, kind of like that, and then just kind of roll 
it's harder to do it when it's attached to a motor, but just kind of roll it gently, roll the blade gently across the top, and then just pull off the insulation. And then usually what I like to do is just twist, twist the wires together, it keeps them together, keeps them from sticking out at odd angles, because we don't want any, um, any shorting going on. We don't want these wires to touch each other, certainly, while they're on the solder pad. So just str strip off about, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe an eighth or so of insulation. It really doesn't need to be very much. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to tin the wires, and tinning just means that we're going to add some solder to them, and it's going to make the soldering process a lot easier. We're just going to heat up the, we're going to press the soldering iron tip against the wires to let it heat up until it starts to draw up the solder. Just like that. Now on really, on cheap wiring, it won't hold up to the heat of the soldering iron very well and you'll probably melt a lot of the wiring or a lot of the insulation rather if you hold the soldering iron there for very long. Okay, there we go. So we just so we just uh, tinned all these wires. Super easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually attach the motor to the frame and then we'll solder them onto the ESC. Okay, now we have our motor connected and now I'm going to solder the wires on here and I usually like to solder left to right because then that way I'm not crossing over the wire that I had already soldered. I just that seems to work well some of the time. I'm going to clean off my tip here, make sure we have a nice shiny soldering iron tip. And we'll start with this one. I'm just going to just press the wire on there and make sure that the, the solder on the pad is melting and the wire, uh, the solder on the wire is melting. And this one's probably actually just a little bit long, but it will work just fine. Okay, there we go. And the last one. There we go. Now, not not the prettiest job, certainly, um, but it will absolutely work. And then now, since I left these a little bit long, um, there's kind of room for room for movement in in case the ESC, you know, if it moves forward or backward and that way uh, it, it's less stress on the wires. Okay, now that we have this soldered, we need to do one more thing. We need to check and make sure that the direction of rotation is correct. And if it's not correct, all we need to do is swap uh, two of these wires um, and then it will spin, the motor will spin in the other direction. So let me get a battery and my transmitter and we'll test that out. Now, since I'm gonna be hooking up a battery to this, I wanna make sure that I have an antenna on my video transmitter and I wanna make sure that I don't have any propellers. And since I don't have any motors other than this one, I don't think the propellers will be an issue. So I'm gonna plug this in, arm it, there we go. I can feel that it is, uh, it is directing my finger in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, in this case, that is actually what we want. We want it to, to spin um, out from the middle and then sort of in from the front, which is how I have uh, this particular quadcopter set up. So in this case, we do not need to swap the wires, but if you did need to swap the wires, if you did need to change the direction of rotation of your motor, all you need to do is uh, desolder one of these wires, desolder the other wire, and then swap them and solder that one there and that one there or any any combination of the three, whichever you prefer. And that would cause the motor to spin in the opposite direction. All right, well, there you go. That's how you swap a motor on your Wizard X220 or other quadcopter. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, or if you had any questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. And uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll put links to the uh, soldering iron and the solder and stuff that I use just in case you're interested. Um, if you have any more questions about beginner soldering quadcopter RC electronics type stuff, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you uh, subscribing and following along. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel if you'd like to see more uh, DIY and RC videos like this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.